So if you already pay for the Adobe products like Photoshop and Premiere, what you'll have to do is you'll click on the Creative Cloud desktop and from there you can go ahead and download the Photoshop beta app. This is not your regular Photoshop, it is the Photoshop beta. Once you're there, simply open up an image and we're gonna see this box right here, this toolbox that never used to be there before in the regular Photoshop. From here, you can do simple things. Like if you select remove background, it will go ahead and do a phenomenal job at isolating the subject and removing the backdrop. But this is not what you're here for. You're here for the generative AI stuff. So check this out. So currently this is a horizontal photo and this is about 16 by nine. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop this to be two by three and I'm gonna extend it this way and I'm gonna extend it on the bottom too. And if I hit the check mark, you'll see it's just white boxes. But if we go to the rectangular marquee tool and we select this area, and then we also select the bottom area too, what I can do is I can click on generative fill and I actually don't need to describe, I don't need to put a prompt in here, I'm just gonna let Photoshop decide and extend the image. So check out what it does and then we'll play around with the actual prompt directing it what to do. So check this out, it's giving us three variations. Look at how amazing this is. This used to be impossible to do. So this is variation one, then we can toggle and go to variation two, and we can toggle yet again and go to variation three. You can see there are differences in the outfit that she has on, the background changes a little bit, but it looks uniform, it looks like it fits in. And if we take a look at our layers panel, you will see that what it did is it went ahead and created a generative layer. This is gonna change the workflow of everyone that uses Photoshop. Furthermore, check out what I can do. Okay, so let's play now a little bit and go ahead and add things to the actual photo and subtract things. So for instance, this is a long exposure photo that I took in New York City. Very difficult to do and so I'm curious, if I try to add a large tortoise here, what is it gonna do with all these shadows and is it really gonna fit the picture? So the first thing you wanna do is navigate to the lasso tool. We're gonna select the lasso tool and then here, wherever you want the tortoise to be, so in my case it's right here, you have to carefully select around. Don't select any extra areas because Photoshop's gonna take that into account. Then we're gonna click Generate Fill. So take a look at that. It actually did a great job matching the lighting, even giving it some shadows. So if I go ahead and I zoom in here, you'll see that it did a pretty good job. And you can actually see the three different versions of what it decided to give me. Now take a look at the composition of the photo. It doesn't affect it at all. The shadows work, the coloring works. This is gonna change the way that people use Photoshop. Another example would be if I go ahead and I create a large circle here and I'm gonna type in alien invasion and then I'm gonna click generate. Isn't that crazy? Look at this, the three different versions that it gave us. Now, this is obviously a little bit easier because it's just superimposing an image over the actual image that was there. But still, this is very impressive. It does it very quickly. And this is like an interactive mid journey in Photoshop. Now, going back to our original photo, if I go ahead and I wanna add some glasses to her, I wanna point out to you guys that when you use that lasso tool, don't use any extra area because again Photoshop is going to take that into consideration and it might change some things that you actually don't want it to change and so in the prompt we're just going to specify that we want some glasses added now let's see what happens when we click generate it added some glasses it even gave a little bit of a golden tint there and that's probably from the lighting but this is very believable it's believable that she's wearing glasses and we were able to do that in a second one other thing i want to point out is that this can be very annoying this toolbox right here so if you click and hold this icon all the way to the left you can actually drag it down to wherever you want to position it also go ahead and help adobe photoshop by letting it know that this is good or this is bad or something is inappropriate so for instance on this one i might select it's great. And then if I go to another option, this did not do a good job. So I will select not great. This is how AIs learn, machine learning, right? They need a lot of data and they need input from us. So when you tell it that this is not a good output, it's gonna go ahead and improve the model. 
So now for the last example, let's go ahead and add a necklace right here. So we will type into the generative fill prompt. We'll say add necklace. And remember, you can't just add things. You can also take away things. So you can select things and ask Photoshop to remove it and it will remove it pristinely. This is a game changer. Look at this. This is perfect. This is very believable. And again, it followed the path that I lasso outlined. So one thing to point out when I created the lasso, I went a little wide with it and that's why it's given a necklace that's a bit wide. However, what you can do is elongate it this way a bit and then it would look more real. But look at this. If we zoom in, look at the shadow, look at the lighting. It all fits. It's believable. This is why this program is amazing. Keep in mind, this isn't just great for adding. You can also remove things. So you can select things and then remove them that you don't want in the picture. Now, one last thing I want to show you guys is that you can actually go ahead and blend some photos. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and crop this photo. And then I created this in mid journey. This is Elon Musk yelling with a fire in the background. So what I'll do, I'll crop this as well. And then I'm going to elongate this picture and I'm going to include this picture of Elon Musk. So we'll go to our layers panel. I'll unlock it. I will bring it over here. All right, guys. So this part is super, super important. If you're going to go ahead and blend two pictures, you have to make sure that they are on the same layer. The way I accomplish that is I look at the topmost layer and then I select control shift alt e and what happens is you get a layer that is going to have everything that was visible from here i will take the rectangular marquee tool i will select the middle area and this is going to do such a better job than simply content aware so here i will go ahead and i will generative fill the area so look at how perfectly it filled that in. This is very believable. It blended these two photos. And again, just to show you how wild this could be, if I want, I can go ahead and I can add an alien right here. So let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to do generative fill and I'm going to say evil alien and then I will select generate. So look at that. That is pretty gnarly. Very, very quickly, it went ahead and filled that in. I didn't have to buy this image from anywhere. It just got created. So one thing I really want to try, I'm actually really curious what's going to happen here, is I'm going to ask it to create an accountant logo emblem. Let's see if it goes ahead and does it. I'm very curious if it's like mid journey and it can create actual logos. So let's see what happens here. So as you can see, it's in its very raw stages, but it does have a mind of its own. It's not quite there as mid journey and stable diffusion is with the creativity and the logo and the vector styles and everything like that. But as far as pictures, it does a phenomenal job.